Here's the problem. I was trying to make this object look like it was radiating light. You know, something that was real shiny. You might say, well, just add a glow. And I did. But it wasn't really what I was going for. So you might think, well, well why don't you just try adding the light rays? And I did. But again, it didn't really look like what I wanted. So what I did was I started combining and compositing combinations of nodes to get this. Is it perfect? No. That's why I made it free. Now, before you go into the description and download it, just give me two seconds of your time. So what I've gone ahead and done is created a node, a group node, and I've called it the PNG Rays node uh, because I originally intended this to be used for PNG images with transparent backgrounds, but then I realized you could probably use this with mass videos or other kind of cool effects that you want to apply something to. All right, thank you for your two seconds. If you want, go ahead and scamper away. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through how you would download and install it, and then how you would actually use those nodes. So if you're curious about that, stick around. Let's go ahead and hop into it. So in the description, there will be a link to my Ko-Fi page, my coffee page. I'm not sure how you pronounce that website, but in there, there will be an item in my shop called the PNG Ray Effect. I'm not sure if you have to add it to a cart or anything, but you should be able to download it for free. There will be a field where you can enter in a dollar amount. Go ahead and put zero. If you do want to go ahead and support me in the channel, I, I mean, that would be amazing and appreciated, but I'm not expecting it. My goal is to give back to some of you guys in the DaVinci community. All right, so once you download it, you should have this dot setting file here. And if I wanted to, I could actually drag and drop this guy into the Fusion page, into my Fusion composition, and you should have the node right there. This is great for one-time use, but if I want to actually install this so that I can pull it up in my tool menu, we need to save it in the macros folder in DaVinci. Now I'll go ahead and leave the address to the directory in the description, but one of the easiest ways to get to it, if you have DaVinci open, go ahead and go into the Fusion page on any file, go up top to Fusion, Macro Editor, and that should pop open, Ooh, should pop open this window. And then you can either go to these three dots up top if you have them, or go to File and then Open. And this will open the macro folder within DaVinci. And you can see, I've already got a couple folders set up. It's not necessary, but if you want to, go ahead and create a folder within here to save this macro. And then what you're gonna wanna do is go to where you've saved this file, either copy or cut it, and then go to this folder and then paste it in here. Now, once you do that, go ahead and close that window to use it. After you've installed it, go to your tool menu, type in PNG rays, go ahead and import it. I've already got a little composition set up here. And so if I were to insert this node into that composition, bam, look at that light, light everywhere. <laughs> now go ahead and feel free to play with some of these sliders we've already got set up here, but let me cover a couple things real quickly so that you get a better understanding of how this works. This should be imported as a group node. You can kind of see the layering of the different nodes within it. If you wanna actually see how this is built out, you can just double click on that node and it will expand it. Now by no means you have to go through here and look at all these different settings, but if for some reason you do wanna change some things or play with how some things are layered, feel free to add and customize this. But essentially how this works is we have layers of glows and light rays to help build out a more fuller effect, if you will. So I'm gonna go ahead and cycle through a couple of these real quick. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. Start with a glow in the middle. And that kind of is our core effect. And then this expands out to some different branches of the node. On the right side, we have the outer rays. And then these are attached to a displace and zoom node. And all this does is add a subtle amount of motion to the rays. And then down the middle, we have the inner rays, and these are all blended together to make it appear like there's actually a light coming from the inside as well as the outside. And if we go down to the bottom, we have our final effect. All right, so let me go ahead and close this real quick. All right, again, I'm not gonna cover all the different sliders that you go over. I'm just gonna talk about a couple that are important and then how you might apply this to other things that you're working on. So each section should be numbered based off of the layer or the ring of effect that's being applied. So it goes one through six. And I actually think the most important slider for you to look at is gonna be down here at the bottom. It's the master blend. And so if I were to take this down, this is just gonna be your overall blend and opacity for this effect. 
So say for instance, you feel like it's too bright in general, just bring that down. Another cool thing that you can do is this has a mask input. It's this gray arrow in our workspace. So if I were to attach our input to the mask input, you see it's masking our effect. So say for instance, you just want the outer glow of this effect and not actually the object in it for whatever reason. You can check on these two boxes to eliminate our object and just have the outer glow. And if for whatever reason you want just it on the outside, again, you can do that. So let me go ahead and uncheck those and then remove our mask. Now each of the layers of glows and rays is going to have a blend slider attached to it. So if for whatever reason, you just don't want any of the outer rays, go ahead and turn that slider down. And on these bottom set right here, these are gonna be subtle changes to how our outside rays displace and move uh, for this effect. Let's go ahead and make our way up top here. Uh, the core glow and the core glow size are gonna be ones that I would be careful messing with because if you remember, when we expand out this node tree, the core glow is what is getting fed to all of our effects. So if you mess with those, it will mess with everything but it is there for you if you do wanna change it so we can change down the core glow size and it kind of messes with the overall blend of the effect. Um, the size itself is one that I would not mess with too much, but you can get some cool looking things with it. I think one of the more fun things is actually the ray position. And this is where you get some really interesting looking things. So for instance, I can change where the rays are being sourced from, which is a built-in thing from the light ray node and you can start to get some really cool, colorful looking effects from this node. Obviously, if you would like to make this uh, a solid color, you can do that so we can make this a nice scion blue, and then we can change the position. And I really think one of the nice things about this is that it, it sources some of the color blending from the object itself. So if I change the ray position, you can see that it's not all a scion blue because it's uh, mixing with the red and the yellow from the DaVinci uh, PNG. And so with this, you could do some things where you possibly link the center position to your object center position, or you can just move the object around to get some, I don't know, some unique looking things. I don't know, have fun with it. And then something else that somebody pointed out to me is that you could use this like you would the normal light ray nose if you're trying to add some subtle soft glow or rays to your video. So, so I have a video file here of a uh, camera moving through the forest and you can see it's, it's pretty bright, but if we wanted to, we could play around with some of the gain settings and you can get some, I don't know, some interesting looking stuff. Again, it's not perfect, but it's just another tool that you can add to your arsenal to create some unique effects and looks, I guess. So again, this is my first time doing something like this. So if you do find it useful, or if you have problems, or you need help, please let me know because I would love to be able to start giving back to the DaVinci community. But thank you guys, uh, and yeah, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.